welcome to this month's Paint Box Project. I'm Katherine Gray and I'm your teacher. Uh, this month's project is the pink spray roses and the pretty blue and white oriental vase. Uh, we're going to start this 8x10 project here in just a few minutes and I hope you all will enjoy. To start the drawing, I'm going to take my number four brush and just get it a little bit wet and come over here and pick up this yellow ochre. It's a kind of mustardy yellow. And just to help us with our drawing, just to set some parameters, I'm going to mark a little dot halfway on each side of my rectangular 8x10 canvas. Then let's draw a line at about the one third of the way up mark here to be the tabletop line. And then I'm going to come up just about an inch from the bottom right here in the center and I'm going to mark the center of this little hexagonal vase. It's a cute little vase I have here in the studio. I'll cut away to it here at some point and insert a picture. It's a little blue and white vase. I think it's like a little coffee, little coffee holder uh, with a pretty Asian design. Chinoiserie, they call that. A uh, little blue and white, very popular pattern again, trending right now. You see it in a lot of the artwork and fabrics and interiors. So there I draw, I drew three little lines, three little segments. They're little rectangles. And it should look about like that. Then I'm going to draw in four big circles. It will be the, the roses. So the first one's pretty much at center. The next circle is kind of leaning out this way. We've got one touching up at the top there. And another one kind of separated over here, leaning out. And then we're gonna draw the little bulb, which is kind of looks like a little tulip. A little, I always think it's like a little shape like a little wine glass. And now I want to make sure that all these flowers aren't going to be facing dead center towards me because that would be kind of improbable and a little boring if we did. So like let's say this one I said was facing towards us. So I'm going to draw a little circle where I think the center is. This one's facing away from us so I'm just going to draw almost a little oval as if its front face is facing that downward. This one may be facing upward a little. Let's have this one facing the other direction. And with my students in class, I, I have to encourage them to do that because otherwise they do generally tend to paint all the flowers facing just straight forward towards you. And in reality, that it would be a pretty hard flower arrangement to make um, or pretty awkward looking, like I said. Then I'm just drawing in some random leaves and these uh, little spray roses had some long leaves with them and maybe just making sure that they can fill in some of those spaces there. Um, that's pretty much it for the drawing. I hope you can catch up to me after putting your video on pause if you need to. So we basically have the tabletop line, three little rectangles, the center line is straight and then we angled up the two sides and we did the five big circles and add the leaves. And that's it for the drawing. So we'll see you back here at step two. Okay, step two is going to be the background. We're going to make a pretty yellow for the wall color. And then we're gonna make a nice pretty, couple of pretty browns for the tabletop color. So let's start with the walls. I'm going to take white with my palette knife, just pick that up and put in a little yellow. And the yellow, I mix it in with just the end of the palette knife. 
the, uh, the little end of the palette knife is kind of springy, so that's the end that we use. I try not to get the paint up too high on that palette knife. It gets kind of hard to use it up there. So I'm going to add a little more yellow. I'll keep adding yellow until I have a shade that I like. I actually think I have maybe two yellow shades in there. So I've got one that's a little darker. And sorry about that noise. My building's kind of noisy here today. And uh, just yellow, add it into that white for the background up top here. And I'm gonna start laying it in. So I'm gonna pick it up with my brush. I'm just gonna sweep forward pick up a good hunk of paint and we're going to start spreading it on there. Sweep it up, pick it up and spread that paint with a nice soft end of that brush. Make sure it doesn't feel like you're drawing. Make sure you're really sliding that paint so it's getting... If you get close to the drawing you're going to pick up a little of that orange and I don't think that's a bad thing. Just be a little bit careful. And um, we keep on spreading that paint. And I'm gonna maybe pause this video for just a minute while we have um, some of the commotion in the building passing through. So I want you to make sure you've always got enough paint on the end of your brush. And we're just gonna spread it through there a little at a time make more paint if we need to. So I'm going to mix some more of that paint. Scrape that together. I'm going to use the rest of this white and we're going to add some yellow in. So just spread that like that. I want you to always make sure you've got enough paint on the end of that brush that you are really sliding it along. So you always feel that paint sliding underneath the brush. And I go kind of fast, so if you need to pause the video, you can pause. And I get up close to those orange lines that we drew, the yellow ochre lines. And if we mix in with the yellow a little bit, it's okay. We just need to uh, we just need to in those little areas. That's why I love this number four brush. Um, I think there's a little bit of a yellow spot here and here. I might just take some of that yellow and just splash it around in there. If you feel, feel like it got a little pale on you, you can just pick up that yellow and put it in there. There you go. That's it for the yellow half of the background. Now let's go to the wood tabletop. I'm cleaning my brush off, get all that yellow out of there, over here on my paper towel with my water cup. And for the brown, I'm going to use a little bit of this yellow ochre that we drew with. And I'm gonna add some of this burnt umber brown in there. And then I need to reach over here and get some more white. Okay, so we're making that brown for the tabletop. I took a little yellow ochre and a little burnt umber. That's your dark, dark brown. Then let's see, I'm gonna take the um, same two colors, yellow ochre, a little bit of the dark brown. I'm gonna add a little white into it and that'll be the lighter part of the table. It's a little lighter over here. I think there's a shadow on this side over, over here is a shadow. So, that's the light side, and then we're going to take the darker brown, and we're going to make, actually, I think the darker brown by itself could be the shadow color. So, we've got light, medium, and dark, and we're ready to start painting the tabletop. Again, I'm going to take my brush, and I'm just going to sweep forward, load it up with a lot of nice paint, and just start spreading it on there. Maybe pick up a little of that medium color now. Spread that paint. So the rule of thumb is you always want to pick up enough paint over here 
to be able to feel it spreading underneath your brush and looks like I might need to make some more paint but again if I just pull that brush along and I always feel that paint sliding under the brush and time to make some more let's see I'm gonna to have to get out some more burnt umber it's a rainy day here in Louisville terrible rainy day but it's the weekend before our big Kentucky Derby horse race and so they'll it will be a busy week here this week uh, let's see I'm going to pick up the yellow ochre the dark brown that's kind of our medium color the yellow ochre with the dark brown with some white it's our lighter color and it might take you a while to get used to using this palette knife, but if you can just use the tip of it, like I was saying before, just that tip where it's kind of bendy, it'll help you uh, get to learn, help you to learn how to use that. Pick up the paint, I'm spreading it along. And I'm spreading it, as you can see this time, with the background, I kind of spread it in all kind of all different directions just to get some good coverage. Down here on the tabletop, I'm spreading it um, in long horizontal brush strokes because I want it to kind of look like it's the wood grain of the table. So it's kind of long, straight. Long, straight brush strokes. And like I said, you can feel it. And the thing about oils is because it's so thick and three-dimensional, we like to lay it on there nice and thick so it can stand up and have some pretty brush strokes. You don't get the quality of brush strokes very much with a, like a flatter medium like watercolor. So we like all that texture we can get with. Let's see, I ran out of that medium color. I'm gonna to try to just get a little more. And the shadow, I'm gonna use just the burnt umber brown by itself. I want the shadow to be coming straight from the corner of that one last little segment over there. We can soften that up a little bit. We'll just kind of tap it. If you'll notice, I hold my brush very lightly. My students are always amazed. We don't wanna bear down on it like a pencil or a marker. The brush is meant to be held very lightly and hold it a little bit further back so that you really don't get very much pressure on that brush as you're painting. And that'll, that'll be even more important when we do things like the petals of the flowers. We want them to look really soft and fluffy. We're gonna to have to keep the pressure of the brush really light. So that's it for the background. And we are gonna take a break and let you all catch up and put it on pause and we'll meet you back here for step three. everybody we're back for step three and that's going to be painting this adorable blue and white vase and what we're going to do is we're going to make up three shades of white um, lightest probably pure white over here on the side where the sunlight's coming in and then a very light tinted white kind of tinted blue and then a little bit deeper shade for this third segment of the vase that's more in shadow over here so let's see, I'm going to um, I think what I'm going to do is let's see if we can't pull these down so that they're both showing here. segment okay so we're gonna make up the three shades of white well like I said first shade is just pure white so let's just drop that right there the second shade is gonna be white with just a little bit of blue in it so I'm gonna go over here to the uh, this little cerulean blue. 
I'm trying to cut that out. And let's see, I need some more white. White, all right. Um, let's see, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Just a little bit. Oh, Sienna, there's my dog snoring. Apologize. I'm gonna tint this a little bit more. Okay, and let's see, I didn't mean to, but I used up my pure white. So pure white, very light tinted blue, and then we're going to tint this one just a little darker. Let me hold that up to my other page, okay. So back to the first white. I'm gonna make sure I have all this wood color out of my brush. And I'm going to pick up this first white and just spread it down on the side that I've said was getting the most sunlight over here on the left. And Spread it nice and thin, thick. I'm sorry, spread it nice and thick. Okay, so we have Sienna, my, my other little Shizus here sleeping. Many of you who've been painting along with me remember the other snoring dog under the table. Well, he was 14, 14 and a half, and he crossed over the Rainbow Bridge and is no longer with us. So today in the studio, and we miss him, but today in the studio we have his younger sister who is now the dog that we hear snoring under the table. I'm taking the, the light, the middle blue, and the darker blue. It's already so pretty, even without the pattern on there. Even without the pattern. Ah. Picked up some brown. So we're going to be careful that we don't touch that brown down there. I got a little too close to it. And now, let's see. We're going to draw this little pattern in. It might look a little scary to you, but what I'm gonna do is just get the very, very tip of the brush into the dark ultramarine blue. And you see how I'm just getting the little corner of that brush into that ultramarine blue. I'm gonna bring it over here, and I'm gonna turn this brush straight up and actually kind of draw with it. So I'm always telling you to try to remember to paint with your brush and don't do any drawing. And now I'm telling you the exact opposite. So you're going to, I'm going to, oops, don't get too much on there. I'm going to take just the chisel under the brush and draw those pretty lines with the dark blue. And draw a little more here. Here we go, just the little lines. And then I'm going to draw this pretty chinoiserie pattern. And that is very popular many centuries ago. It still is popular. I'm gonna start with a little pagoda. And that's just a little house with a little pretty little pointed roof. And you don't have to have it just like mine. There's usually kind of a little tree next to that blowing in the wind. And, and then uh, there's another little building here. It has kind of two, la two layers of roof. Two layers of roof like that. So it's kind of like two little rectangles on their side there. And I'll put some little building lines in, a little window, maybe a little chimney. And then there's more little trees and such kind of floating around. And then one more, let's do one more kind of pagoda on this side, pagoda roof. And there's usually, just trying to keep that on, on the chiseled end, make up a little pretty pattern. If this is your first project, you probably think that's pretty hard, but 
I'll try to keep it easy. I'll put some little birds flying up there. I think that's good enough. I might even take some more of that blue and just do some little squiggles in here. Kind of fill out, fill out that pattern. A little more squiggles. And I think that's it. We will come back and reevaluate in the final step to see if we like our pattern, if we think we need to add anything to it. And for now, we'll take a break, let you guys get caught up, and I will start on the pink flowers and the leaves when we come back. Okay, we're back for the roses. We're going to make three shades of pink, and then we're also gonna use the, the red all by itself for the darker areas. So the, we're gonna use this purple red, which we usually call alizarin crimson. So it's kind of a crimson burgundy color. Uh, on your paint tube, it should say purple red because it is a very purplish red. During the break, I should have got out some more of the white. Okay. So right over here, I'm going to start with the white and the tiniest little bit of the purple red to make our lightest shade. Oops, I already got too much in there. So I'm gonna move that over to our second lightest shade. And that first shade, I want it to be almost just barely off white. It's what we call a tint. When a color is very close to white, it just has that small tint of the red color to it, and it was called a tint. So there we go, there's our tint of pink, our medium pink. And we're going to make kind of a little bit darker shade of the pink. Ooh, maybe a little too dark. Let's add a little more white in there, a little bit last of that white. All right, so there's a light, a medium, and a dark pink for the roses. And then I'm going to pick up, well, I guess I'm gonna get out some more of the purple red. I don't have my assistants here today. If you notice, it's kind of, other than the noise in the hallway, it's kind of quiet here without my, my giggling friends and assistants. And I'm gonna use the, I don't have Liella here to refill my paint for me and laugh and talk. But we'll have everybody back next time. So now I have the dark here and the three shades that I made and we're ready to start those roses. Again, I'm gonna make sure I have all the blue uh, washed out of my brush. So let's just start, maybe we'll start with this darkest of the colors that we mixed up. And just start staying in that circular direction, putting in some little circular strokes on each. We can even kind of have fun and make them kind of curly and round. I'll put a little bit of the darks in each one. And then we'll go come back in with the lights. The, I mean the medium color. I'm staying away from the center right now because I'm going to talk about how we, what we're going to do with those centers. Now I'm just taking the paint on the end of my brush like I've been doing before. Just lightly, gently laying it down. And I'm, I'm gonna stop right now and I'm going to make some more of those two medium shades of red. And taking the white, we're gonna add that red in there. Add some more white in there. And then we're gonna take red and white and make that darker shade. Hopefully I have enough to go around now. All right. Hope you all are following along. Email me with questions. I'd love to uh, know if there's anything you'd like me to do differently. We're always improving the video and the sound and including 
pictures and text. Um, I want you guys to have the best learning experience you can out there. I'm picking up that lightest color now. I'm just going to kind of start ruffling that in there. It looks so pretty. I'm keeping most of that light color to the side of the canvas where I said the sunlight was, was staying. So if you notice in the photograph that I sent you in my painting example that the light is mostly on the left side of those flowers. So see, that's going to keep it so much more dramatic. Just keeping that light. And I have a little white left over here from that when I painted the vase. I'm just going to use some of that in here. Tap it on the mostly on the left side. I'm going to start going into the center now. I want to start putting some darks because. Those petals are so closed up and close in there that there's not a lot of sunlight that gets in them. So, I might even reach over now to this darkest dark with the purple red without anything in it and just drop it, begin to drop it with little taps, little semicircles into that center area. And it's starting to make those flowers look like they have some depth. Same with this little bud. I forgot to paint the little bud down here. And then I'm gonna take that dark color as long as we're working with it and just wiggle it around in some of these other areas of these roses because sometimes you get those really pretty shadows between petals. They're starting to take shape. And I'm going to go back to wipe off my brush here, go back to this middle color and uh, fill in whatever little blanks I still have left. And again, I'm always going to say we don't have to make it perfect and it doesn't have to be exactly the way you want it during these steps where we just keep moving forward. Then we come back in the very last step and we see if we want to change anything. And Maybe make little changes. Hopefully there's nothing that has to be totally redone. Because uh, these can be pretty much the way you want them to look. You can be proud of your work and however different it might look from mine or fellow students. If we post them online and talk about them on Facebook in the, in the Your Paint Box group page, and uh, I guess I'm going to stop here on the roses. Like I said, we can come back to them in the next step, but I'm going to go ahead and mix up some green for the leaves. And the best green for us to, to make is just the old formula of blue and yellow. Blue plus yellow makes green. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue, the dark blue, some of this bright yellow and those two together just make a beautiful green. So that's gonna be the darker green for the leaves. We're gonna make a second pile. Looks like I'm gonna to need to get some yellow, lemon yellow out, a little more lemon yellow. Take a little less blue this time, okay? I wanna do, well, I might even take some of that away. And then a little more yellow because I really want this to be the light yellow. And that green is pretty dark. I'm going to take more of that yellow. There we go. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to split this pile in half and add maybe just a little white. A little yellow and white and just kind of lighten up one more. To me, that looks a little too white. I'm gonna add just a little yellow to that. I like a really light yellow green. There we go. A little lighter, pretty bright yellow spring green that's gonna go in there. Okay, I'm 
gonna start with the dark. I'm gonna pick up that dark green, kind of tuck it down in these little corners where the light doesn't get in. And my students always have a hard time putting in those darks between the flowers, but when they do, they understand that that really gives it some drama because there's gonna be shadow back there. Light and shadow is what gives paintings drama. Back down inside the vase, you see there's shadows down in there where the flowers are tucked in. Then I'm gonna take the medium shade and we'll start bringing that out. Maybe draw that little stem for the, the bud there with some little leaves. Uh, the medium shade, we'll add those little leaves in there. And there we go. Now I'm gonna go in with that light, 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 pretty light green. I'm gonna add some more yellow to that. I really want to see the yellow in there. Yellow, oh, that's pretty. So I'm just kind of taking the edge of the brush and the flat side of the brush and dragging it along to make those leaves. Just kind of twist it and you can get it to a point. Lay your brush down flat and give it a little twist. This one should be a little longer. That has a nice point. And I think I need a dark in between these two leaves because it's looking like one big leaf. There we go. There we go. All right, I'm going to let you all catch up and play with those leaves and flowers. Keep them simple. Uh, the simple shapes is what we're trying to capture here. Keep it more a little impressionistic not so realistic. Um, looks like this flower could use just a little more color and a little more. We'll come back at the next step, step five, the next step we're going to come back and do what we call our final editing and I call it working the magic. We're going to take this pretty good painting and turn it into a really good painting. So we'll see you back here next step. So during the break, you have a chance to take a look and see what you want to do to the painting to finish it up. And I've always thought this was a pretty little painting. I'm going to get some more yellow out. Because I want to, one more time, get a little more yellow in that bright green up there. So there's a little contrast in those leaves. I want one to be a little bit brighter than the other one. And so sometimes you can just drag that paint right on top. A little yellow there, it's pretty. Just a little bit on top there. I'm doing it very gently, holding my brush very, very softly and gently is the way to accomplish anything that you want to layer on in this top layer. I'd also like to see that this would have a little more ruffly edge right there on the edge of that flower. So I'm going to come over here, make sure I have enough paint. Let me scrape this together here. So I can pick up enough paint to just kind of ruffle it like that. Maybe it needs another little petal down here. I don't want to overwork it. I think it all looks pretty good. Let me get a little, uh, a little more blue. There's some kind of gaps in the pattern here. Let me add a little pattern, just a little. All right. I don't really think I see anything else I need to do to this. I'm pretty happy with it. That was a fun painting. It's gonna be a lovely one for you to give away to a girlfriend or a mother, mother-in-law, cousin, whoever, somebody's gonna love this. Or if you were like me when I first started painting and if I was proud of it and pretty happy with it and I was astonished that I even created it, I would hang it up or put it in my own bookshelf and uh, look at it for years to come. Uh, let's go ahead and sign your initials or your name. I like to just put some kind of 
information on there that lets people know that it was created by you. So sometimes I just put KG, just tap it with the corner of the brush, and happy painting. See you next time. All right, painters, thank you for joining me in my studio again. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I hope you're happy with your painting. Share it with somebody and be proud of it. And remember to practice. Painting takes a lot of practice. Uh, no one's gonna be good after one or two tries. So uh, I've been painting for 40 years and they say you're only as good as as many miles of canvas as you've covered. So keep on covering canvas and go to the craft store, use your paints, try to put my lessons to work uh, yourself and on some other projects around the house, like I've got this little vase here, be a great little project to paint. Um, maybe we'll do that for next month's project. We'll see you next time. Take care.